Use a moment to visualize your favorite forest. It can be a close forest where you go for a walk, or a forest landscape you see from a big hill or from a window of an airplane. Can you imagine how that forest would look like after 5, 10 or 20 years? Can you somehow account for all the benefits it has produced? How about if the forest was managed differently all this time? Actually, how do you think it should be managed to produce the maximum amount of different benefits from that forest for the next 10 years from now? What actually are the desirable benefits that the forest should produce? All this is what a forest planner needs to think for work every day. We forecast the development of the forest as a result of some management activities and we account for the benefits this management scenario produced. Obviously we need to know the decision maker very well to propose such management activities that fit with their objectives. I will talk you through a process that is designed for multi-attribute forest planning to produce multiple goods and benefits from the forest and especially for the decision support of private forest owners. This is how we see it in Finland, but it could be applied at least over the northern boreal forest zone where we are located. I will first talk about some general aspects, then some challenges and some proposals for solving them. The forest itself does not need management and it readily produces benefits like habitats for different species or storages of carbon. They can jointly be called ecosystem services of forest. But we are human and if there were no humans in this game we wouldn't be talking about this kind of classifications at all. So some of the services that the human need, like timber for construction, require that timber is extracted at some point. Certain management could actually improve also services that don't necessarily need it. For example, the recreation value of forest can benefit from mild harvests. So there is no single type of forest management. Uh, there is no single management prescription that would work for every forest. Instead, each planning situation is a little bit different, depending on the objectives and the type of the fo forest holding. So for this, these reasons, the planner would first find out who is the decision maker, what are his or her or their preferences, on what kind of goods and services the forest should produce now and in the future. On the other hand, the planner needs to find out about the present state of the forest. What kind of trees are currently growing there? What is their species, average size, anything else that would affect the future development? The main aim is to determine what kind of treatments are possible and what are their consequences. For example, as a result of different harvests, how would the forest develop afterwards? How many and what kind of goods and services would that type of treatment produce? Knowing that, we can evaluate if the proposed treatment fits at all to the objectives of the decision maker. We can do forest planning in many ways, quantitative terms, qualitative terms. Well, I prefer doing this strongly quantitatively. It means that we should have and process all the information in a numeric form. When we have all the information in numeric form, then all the fun begins. We can use simulation and optimization methods. We can get numerically reasoned solutions. By examining those, we can get an idea how far or how close would some alternative solution be. 
we can analyze the sensitivity of the solution and answer questions like what if the assumptions I made do not hold? Practically all the forests are being used simultaneously for multiple purposes. Using numeric methods we can guarantee that all the multiple objectives of the decision maker are really included in, when making the management proposal. On the other hand, we can ensure taking sustainability into account. We pronounce it as relevant constraints of an optimization problem. It means that the solution for our planning task is searched for within these constraints, taking them into account first. So the solution can never be unsustainable, because no such solution can be found. The problem is just to write the simulation and optimization problem correctly and in numeric terms. But that is what has been taught in the university for tens of years already. Sounds like a solid procedure. Then what is difficult in forest planning and why does it need research? Let's talk a little bit about two scales. First about the time frame of a forest plan. Whatever action we propose for in the forest, we cannot see its effects very soon. If we plant spruce, it will not be matured until 60 or 80 or more years. So is that a good decision? In that time, the price of the timber changes, the growth of the forest changes. Do these trees that we planted actually even survive in the warming climate all the time? Then another scale. We can make plans for individual forest or a group of forest stands. Even for one owner, the sum of optimal solutions of individual forests is unlikely the same as the solution for the entire forest holding. In the latter case, uh, the management of one forest depends on the management applied elsewhere in the neighboring forest. One example. Consider that you want to apply carbon neutral management so that the carbon storage in your forest does not decrease. Then more or less the only option at the level of one stand is no management because the level of growth here in north is so low. But if you consider a forest holding of 20 or 50 hectares, you can harvest one or more stands and the total growth of the remaining stand is still within the same criteria. The carbon storage in the end of the planning period is the same or higher than in the beginning. It's also possible to search for such a scale where the trade-offs between the ecosystem services would be optimized. But then we should acknowledge uh, that the owner uh, might not be the same over that scale and all the owners might not have the same objectives. So if you assume a certain management prescription over a large area or a long time span, but instead the owner is committed to another type of management that will better meet their objectives, then how accurate is your scenario? It's not accurate. The scale issues are also related and it makes sense to consider different scales in planning. Another example. We forest planning researchers often find many good aspects in avoiding clear cuts, doing selective logging instead. One is economic aspect. A forest owner can avoid regeneration costs. He or she can harvest only matured trees and that way get a good profit. But this method also has high wood procurement costs higher than in the clear cuts. According to one of my studies, if the selective logging method becomes much more widely applied, it can increase regional costs of wood supply that will then pour down to the prices and affect the individual owners. According to another result, these types of regional uncertainties related to what management the owners will apply in the future contributed as much as the possible uncertainty related to forest growth in the future. 
There are ways we can account for the sources of uncertainties that I have listed in the last five minutes or so. We have stochastic simulation and stochastic optimization methods. Okay, uh, it would take another 10 minutes to explain those. But there are quite few reasonable general results that we can get from such analysis. If we are afraid of the future risks, we should have forests with as many species as possible in as many different size classes as possible. That way we can be sure that we, quite sure that we have species that will do well against risks and also have good demand. If an owner has one forest stand, then that single stand should be multi-species and multi-structured. But if there are more stands, then we can plan different solutions with multiple species and sizes in the different stands. But this is just for one owner who is called risk neutral. If the owner has a different risk attitude, uh, wait, did we have that another 10 minutes to explain this? No. Thank you so much for your attention.